You really ought to hurry up and get sprogged up, you know, old girl. Times are running out. Tick tock. Why is it there are so many unmarried women in their thirties these days, Bridget? I thought I'd do a different kind of version of a list of 30 before 30. How are you my internet family and welcome back to my channel where I like to share my life and my opinions on things and lots of fun stuff. If you're new stick around my name is Melanie and I'm 28 going on 29 this year. I know I don't look it. That's a lie these lights are just really forgiving as is makeup. Okay so recently some YouTube friends of mine made videos called 30 before 30 and I'm not too sure who started it but I know that Sana, Lucy, Hannah, Grace, loads of people have partaken in this kind of little tag if you'd call it that. And these videos are where each of the YouTubers will go through a kind of bucket list of things that they want to do or goals they want to achieve or whatever before they turn 30 which is kind of like looming right here for me so just think individualized lists of experiences that they would like to have by that age so i liked this idea because it's not like it's turning life into a competition really it's kind of more about challenging yourself when it comes to goal setting though i'll say it is really important for there to be a self-awareness around why you want to reach a certain goal so you're not making a goal out of self rejection you know that shit can get dark real fast but um yeah i guess having an age stamp kind of gives you something to work towards i guess but the thing is as i was trying to compile my list of 30 things that i want to do before i'm 30 um i was struggling with it a little bit and then i saw a video by another friend of mine called nathan that really resonated with me about the race to success, this kind of modern race to be as successful as you can, as young as you can. By like 27, you gotta have a six figure income, a wife, kids, your dream house, a dog, cat, duck, duck, goose. If we're not where we wanna be in five years, we might as well die. If Jake Paul is a millionaire at 21, I gotta be doing something wrong, right? No, you clown. The reason this video resonated with me is because at the time, I it was only recently, like I was achieving loads in life um but not really enjoying any of it properly and none of it felt enough so no matter what i did i wasn't far along enough in my achievements for my age in my head i became so fixated on the end goal that i wasn't enjoying the process days and weeks and months were just going by like that because i was just so kind of need to get there now. This video was amazing and it touched on how social media can make us feel like we're behind because we're kind of almost brought up conditioned to compare ourselves to everyone around us. I see this every day, people holding themselves to their parents' standards. Like, oh, my mum when she was my age had three kids and a marriage and a house and, and this, that and the other. And they're talking about a different world and the world that we live in. I do feel like our generation has the luxury to define success for ourselves because we don't have to fit into um, a mould that society has made for us anymore and we're living longer as well. So you know 50, 100 years ago our lifespans were shorter than they are now. We've got a lot more time to just take our time and enjoy ourselves, to go at our own pace but no, like we're still, so many of us still seem to be in this mad wild rush to um, achieve, 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 get the next thing, the next thing all the time. Um, Nathan also touched on how when we reach a goal, so you know, you make a million quid, then you're instantly like, oh, I want another million. And this is such a, has been such a lesson for me recently because like my whole life, I was like, I want to publish a book. I want to publish a book. The second I've I finished all that. I was instantly like, oh, what next though? I'll do another one. Um, When I made my first short film, it was just like, it just opened up this big well of thirst of wanting to make films and short films. When I travel to a country that I've always wanted to see, I just instantly either want to go back or want to see more or want to go to another country. Um, And that's just human nature. You get a fancy car, you get bored of it after a while. Actually, no, I don't want to chalk it off as just complete human nature because there is people... There are people who don't do that, but it is definitely a massive part of the culture of today. Not that I have anything against the corporate world and big business and stuff like that, but I do think a lot of us are of the mindset where we're like, what next, what next? We're not in a culture of 
sit and be actively grateful for what you have achieved and for what you have right now. Um, and technology has likely exasperated everything. Like we share our achievements, we share the positives and the upsides and stuff like that. Um, Social media hasn't been built around people sharing their failures and being really real, you know? So I don't know, like I kind of wanted to make a response to the 30 before 30 videos, but rather than fixate on things that I've yet to achieve, I thought I'd do a different kind of version of a list of 30 before 30, share a mixture of failures I've gone through before 30 and of lessons learned and of things that I am grateful for, things that have come from the heap of shit that is most of life. I wanna slow it right down and encourage you to do the same. Even if you do have goals, you know, I'm not against goals. The main point I wanna make on that is if you don't accomplish a goal by a certain time or, you know, you set yourself an age and stuff like that, please do not beat yourself up and don't um, make everything about the end goal because it'll cause you a lot of anxiety and possibly depression because you'll always be um, kind of wrapped up in getting there and you'll view yourself as a failure if you don't, which you shouldn't. If I did have a list of 30 things I'd wanna do before I'm 30, I would not feel bad at all if it took me until 40 to reach some of those things, even 50, you know what I mean? So I made a list here on my laptop and I may be glancing down quite a bit. Um, this is my 30 before 30 list. Um, I hurt somebody I loved really badly and I learned that I never wanna do that again. I never wanna have that feeling again. I discovered what kinds of actions make me feel ashamed of myself, um, like touching a hot stove. I know not to do those things anymore. I had my trust broken, which has made it harder than ever for me to trust people. And this sucks, but on the bright side, at least it happened earlier in my life rather than later, providing me with plenty of time to work through those deep wounds. And also with a filtering process, keeping me safe from people who may want to harm me because people do exist out there who um don't really give a shit about you. And I think I'm a lot better now at um kind of keeping the right people in my circles and keeping the wrong people out. I've learned that blurring out all of my acne scars in pictures makes me feel like a dick. Uh, what's the point of having fake memories to look back on? Now I stand in good lighting, but that's about it. I've tried all kinds of food and I'm glad there is a bunch of healthy meals that I actually like. Even though I earn good money, I still live at home with my family in a very small house, um, but it's in a beautiful seaside village and I've learned to be grateful for that and not to dwell on not having that big beautiful house by this age which when I was younger I always thought I'd have you know the whole perfect home thing by like 25 and then when I got to 25 I was like Pfft. I spent quite a time on social welfare um which gave me some insight into what life is like for a lot of people that enabled me to appreciate things more than I would have if I'd never experienced being broke um and yeah I, I would never go back and take away those hard few years because you know, that, that's the stuff there. That That's what really teaches you um, really important things about life is like just going through the mud. You just have to do that sometimes. I allowed myself to become really physically unhealthy age 19, um, you know, and then I just kept wanting to change for all of the wrong reasons, you know, like for just how I looked and all that kind of stuff. I dug my way out of that hole and I'm really glad that I'm gonna enter my 30s with a healthy mind and a healthy body. I'm so happy about that. I was arrested one time. <laughs> I'll say no more on that. It's one to tell the grandkids about anyway. I faced grief quite early in life. I lost a school friend and I lost my grandmother and I, and I lost pets. Um, and I feel like if I went into my third decade without the knowledge of like how impactful grief can be on your entire world, um, I'd be in for a big smack in the face. So. I'm glad that I was exposed to that. I survived an incredibly toxic four year relationship and for the most part, um, I've made peace with that person. Years later, woo, go us, being adults. I had a lump removed from my boob a few years ago and now I always check my boobies for lumps, which is a really important habit to develop and I thought I'd throw that into the list just to encourage those of you who just don't do those kinds of checks to do them might save your life you never knew i worked a job i hated and i got out of there yay <laughs> i've lost two of my teeth to sugar even this one right at the front and um it's made me 
eat less sugar. So hopefully I'll have some teeth in my head when I'm 85. I went through a phase where I was always imitating other people. I wanted to be more like, um, and through doing that I, and feeling the kind of shame and guilt and things like that that comes with that, I now feel like I can just relax into being more myself and who I am. Okay, so I lost friendships that were really important to me at a time, but realized that friends come and go, even real great friends, because life happens and people change and I'm okay with that. I've made peace with the fact that the world's problems aren't my problems. I'm still learning ways in which I can have small or large impacts, how I can cause a ripple effect, but I don't carry the weight of the world on my back anymore every single day which is really really nice i've been in love and have had my heart torn from my chest and handed to me by a smiling man who really didn't give much of a shit and i've been the one to tear hearts from chests the lessons learned from that will stay with me forever um people can't help how they feel right i've said time and time again that i learn how to drive and i still haven't and i feel really shit about that but I, I still, I do really wanna learn. Just because you are the only person in your friend group of, you know, 21 year olds who can't drive doesn't mean that it's too late. It doesn't mean that you can't learn a decade on from then. I moved across the world to live with someone I'd only met once and it all blew up in my face, in LA, no less. Um, But hey, I'll never be that gobshite again, will I? So. Good, good job, Mel. My feelings on spirituality have grown over the past few years. I have a self-awareness now that I definitely didn't used to have. And I, I don't think I'm wise at all, but I do have that kind of awareness that my beliefs and views will change for years and years and years to come. Um, and that who I am right now is like fluid. It's not set in stone. And I think some people go through their entire life never having that realization. I've traveled loads and it made me realize that I need to travel multiple times a year for my entire life or I won't be as happy as I could be if I was traveling because I adore new experiences and meeting new people and seeing new things. I've still never owned a bloody dog and I do think I may come to regret all of the years that I spent living life without a dog or multiple dogs by my side. Um, and that's a bit shit. I have spent a lot of time with my family and that's kind of made me realize like in my bones that I want a large family of my own. Um, I love that I'm not conflicted on it. You know, I just know that I definitely, definitely, definitely want children. I have not read enough books and this sucks because every time I do read a book, I remember how fun reading is um, and oftentimes like I'll buy a few books and I'll get a little bit into it and then I'll just get distracted by the internet and I hate that. Seamlessly into the next point, um, I've probably spent far too much of my life on Netflix and mindlessly scrolling online. I have learned a lot through doing this and I really enjoy it but even though I want to spend more time like outside and things and interacting with real people, I'm still in a mental place where I don't really know how to accomplish that. Like how to overpower my semi addiction to technology. Um, and I'm glad that I can actually like realize that and embrace these kind of shit things about myself that I don't like. I've learned the difference between happiness and contentedness. And I've become satisfied with being mostly content and not mostly happy. I do really appreciate moments of happiness when they come, obviously. But life isn't a big bunch of happy moments, you know? There's a huge amount of it is just kind of being a bit meh and okay. Um, that's completely normal. And also moments of sadness, like I hate when they happen, obviously, but um, I always know that they'll pass because I don't allow myself to wallow in them. And that's a skill I have worked on for years and years. I still suck at budgeting and organization, but I know I'm not alone because the internet. So now I don't hate myself for that anymore. Yay. I am really glad that I went back to university, even though at the time I thought I was too old, which is hilarious because there was people in my class who were like my dad's age, um, proving to me that you know, you're never too old to change your career or for, you know, to get an education. Um, but I am really glad that it's all long behind me now and that it's all finished. Um, and that I'm going into my 30s at least with a degree because this world is competitive as fuck. And finally, um, I've met the person I want to marry. And even though I've known him for over 10 years, I'm really glad that we only got together 
later in life. I don't know, like, there was periods of time where, you know, we could have gotten together in the past and, like, came close to, you know, kissing and all years and years ago, but I had so much to learn before I was ready to be in this situation. I think if I had have been in this situation years and years ago, it wouldn't be what it is now. I wouldn't feel how I feel now about him. Yeah, like I, when I was younger, I wanted to be well settled down by now. Instead, I am freshly in love and I am so happy about that and I wouldn't change a single thing um, because of age and, and all that kind of shit, do you know what I mean? That was my little list and I would really, really love if you could comment down below um, some points, like maybe three off of your list of things that you are grateful for or your failures or whatever just things that you have already achieved or you can alternatively leave a list of actual goals you have for when you hit 30 um if you do that instead i'll ask that you think about why you want those things um because once you know why you'll be fine if you only want something because you think that that's what you should want then you have some self-exploration to do. If you like this video, I'd ask that you please give it a thumbs up because it really helps my videos out and I will be back again with another video very, very soon. Thank you for watching and I hope you stick around, press subscribe, click the bell because the subscribe button is uh, shit and doesn't really work. And, uh... Right, I'm off, I'm off, goodbye.